Clouds are not an easy subject to draw by any means. In my last video, I looked at how to draw clouds using pen, using line and other marks just with a multi-liner pen. But I did invite comments and I had a lot of comments that suggested that marker tone would be a better medium to use. And it was hard to disagree with that. So I thought I would do a video on using marker tone for the same scene. And at the end of the video, I'll compare the line drawing with my marker drawing, and you can see which one you think works better. So using my pen, I just do a pretty bare outline of the scene, much less line work than I had in the video that was entirely from line work. I really just wanted to give myself some guides for the clouds and the headland and the waves. So just keeping it very much at a minimum. I think I'm really just using a 0 0.1 millimeter. No, that was a 0 0.3 millimeter pen. Now I'm using a 0 0.1 millimeter pen. And I really want to just keep my edges very suggested. Although if I were doing this video again, I think I wouldn't put any pen marks at all for the clouds. I think I would just totally eyeball it as I was using the markers. But at this stage, I was thinking that those marks would be hidden reasonably well and that I'd get away with it. Now, the problem um, drawing this with line was trying to have the clouds look light and airy enough and yet have enough line work so that it was clear what they were. But I decided that before I do the sky and the clouds, I'm going to do all of the lower half of the picture, get the, the values in place for those, because I can't really read how dark I want to make the sky and the clouds until I know how dark I'm going to make the, the land and the ocean because we, we understand value, lightness or darkness, according to other lightness or darkness, which basically means something looks dark if it's darker than what's around it, even if what's around it is still relatively dark. And something will look light if the values around it are dark. So I thought the safest thing and the most practical thing was to do the values on the headland. Now, I'd, I used an Copic sketch marker, neutral grey, N4 for, for the bulk of the headland there. And now I've used an N5 to just do some darker marks to indicate the, the, um, some of the darker vegetation on the headland. And so basically this headland is N4 and N5. And then when I get down to the very bottom with some of the rocks around the base, I use an N6 just for the very darkest parts of it. And I also use the N6 for some of the um, uh, furthest indications of the water because I was wanting to create some very thin white strips that suggest the waves breaking on the headland at the base of the, the rocks that lead down into the, the ocean. And I think that worked relatively happily that approach. And you, you notice I'm, I'm using my pen and, and doing a few little dots and things and there to try and suggest the texture of, of the, the bushes the, on the headland. And even though I'm doing N4 on N4 and in rough terms, the ink is the same color, it does get slightly darker with, with overlaying it in the one spot. And so we can often create uh, textures using the one marker sometimes a, a subtlety that's that's a stronger subtlety than than if we actually change marker to a darker one but here I've got the N6 and I'm doing these these just darker highlights or darker areas of contrast at the base of the rocks of the headlands now it was interesting um, before I was going to do this I actually played around with a with um uh, a line version of this that that I was playing or experimenting with yesterday, and 
Then I did a black and white print of my picture, which is just off camera, and I'll show it to you at the end. And I realized that I'd been using values that were significantly lighter than what a black and white version of my color reference was. So that was, that was very uh, informative and educational. And I think sometimes it's a very helpful thing to do to help us understand how values change when they or appear to change when the color is taken out. Now, originally I was going to use an N1 for the sky, but I actually switched to an N2 because I realized with the black and white version that the blue actually reads as a darker value than I thought. And I thought, well, it's also going to be helpful for bringing the, the sky out, uh, bringing the clouds out more, the white in the clouds. As it turned out, that wasn't as important as I thought because I ended up leaving a lot less white than I expected to. And I actually, at this point, uh, make the, the, um, the C darker towards the end as well. So I was playing with the overall values throughout the whole of this drawing. Now, initially I start with an N0. So this is my lightest value. This is as light as it's going to get. But I, I pretty well in the end, go over almost all of the cloud using this N0. I only leave the parts that I think might be completely white because I think in the end, I'm gonna get a better effect building up the, 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 the softness of the shadows if I layer the darker colors over the lighter ones. And I, I want to leave a very light sense of, of separation between the, the the cloud and the land. Not, not, not bright white, but, but certainly a very light line of value between the two. And so now I've, I've switched to an N1. And in fact, this is the darkest I get with the cloud, N0 and N1. So I use the two lightest tones, the two lightest values of my Copic neutral gray markers. And I use the next darkest value, N2, for the sky. The sky and the clouds are the lightest three values. The headland is, is not the next one, which is N3, but it's N4, N5, and N6. And then the water is N3, N2, N4, and N5. So. Um, so I'm using from N0 to N6. There are, there are seven different values of gray being applied here. And I'm, I'm going fairly cautiously. And I'm also giving, giving the ink time to dry. I'm a very aware, with, aware of with these Copic alcohol-based markers that they dry slightly lighter. And so do, do need to be a bit patient just to give it a moment to see how is it going to look. And this is where I'm doing a second coat of the N2 for the sky. And it does give a slightly, slightly darker look. And I'm feeling at this stage, it's starting to look a, a little bit kind of blotchy. So I'm, I'm trying to blend some of these uh, areas of value together with a lighter value. But of course, how we see any area of value depends on other value in our scene. And so I'm deciding that this water isn't, isn't dark enough, that I've let it get too light in my, in my value choices. So I'm basically going up one value for each of these pens. So I think that's this is an N3 now instead of an N2, and my N3s became N4s, and generally just turning the 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 darkness knob slightly, uh, <laughs> so that it so that it just reads with a a, a stronger contrast, which I I think I think works works well, and it gives that that churning white wave effect a more crisp appearance. 
So now I'm thinking, how's it, how's it looking? What do I need to do? And I decided to go a bit darker again with still using the N1. It's not a darker pen, but just adding a bit more of this darker ink over the top. And now I decide to soften the edges again with my N0 and do a bit of a blurring effect, connecting some of these darker areas across the lighter areas by adding more value. And all the time I'm, I'm looking through the camera as well as looking at my drawing. The, the ink does appear slightly darker on camera than it does in life. And I, I want to do enough of these darker parts to create a bit of drama, but I don't want to have so much that it starts to look bitsy because there is a, an overall sort of lightness and fluffiness and connectedness with the, the darker areas. So now I'm, I'm really, with my N0, my lightest value, trying to blend a fair bit in together. And I think actually that was a, was a helpful move to make. So i am got one more adjustment to do with, with my waves. And then that's pretty much it, I think. I think I'm fairly happy with this now. And I think it does vastly improve on, on yesterday's drawing, doing this same scene using line work. So let's compare the two just quickly and there we have it in fact well if we're going for realism there's no comparison although i've got to say i'm actually happier with the headline and the wave as looking so much better than i am with the sky i i'm i'm more impressed with the improvement in the in the lower half of the drawing than i am with the upper half i don't know what you think but let me know do you feel like the line drawing has got a bit more kind of interest is is the marker drawing a bit too literal for you which which one do you prefer seeing the two of them together it certainly is a more literal representation of the color photo and look here's the black and white version so you can just see the benefit in removing the color and seeing the value and you can see that the the sky is certainly darker than the cloud but it's not nearly as dark as the greens and the blues of the ocean so being able to see the values in this way so clearly was a big help and I think it's a very worthwhile thing to do. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, how did you find this? Look, I found it a lot of fun and really interesting to do the same drawing with a different media. And if you want to have a go yourself, this photo is already on my channel community page from yesterday's video. So go and find it. And if you've got markers, as I said, I used seven in total. Um, why not have a go? Or you could do it with an ink wash and just increase the strength. But whatever you do, however you're doing it, make sure you have fun. Bye.